Good morning. <laughs> or is it afternoon? It's, it's both. I, it's always fun to try something different and something new. Um, since I've done so many pieces from my culture and, of course, from other parts of life in general, uh, everyday life. Uh, and this is a, such a well-known sub subject and, and a piece that, that I had never thought I would do um, because, in a way, the complexity of it. Uh, when you make a sculpture and you make one figure, then you, you're dealing with that one figure and what he's thinking and you give him a life and whatever else. And, and here there are eight reindeer and Santa and his sleigh. And it, it deals with the season and it deals with uh, cultures and countries and, and so many different um, sections of the world that it affects. And, and of course children. Uh, children are so important. And, and uh, who, who does? When our daughter was growing up, um, her teacher asked her, when she was in the fifth grade, "Who believes in Santa?" And she was the only one who raised her hand. But it was great because if you don't believe in Santa, you don't get a present, you know. <laughs> right. So um, and they and today they're in their uh, early thirties and they still get a present from Santa. So as long as you believe in Santa, you're in good shape. And uh, so it was, it was exciting because of the reindeer, um, the animal portion of, of this whole piece. Um, I, when you're, I've been blind for over 45 years, and to go back and try to make one uh, was difficult. Um, the body movement, the horns, I didn't know what the horns were like, so... So had to go check that out, and um, How did you check that out? went to a taxidermist downtown, and uh, he asked if I could uh, look at one of the um, mounted uh, heads of reindeer, and so I got an idea of what the antlers were like, mm -hmm. and how they are all different regal antlers, um, just beautiful, and the head is different so much from a, a deer or elk. Um, um, so I, I did get an idea, but of course, uh, being not a, a realist in sculpting, but more representational, um, I made it the way that I felt like I wanted to make it. And, but it's you know, as, as close as possible as being a reindeer, S something that isn't tangible, familiar to us. Uh, uh, sometimes it's difficult to put across, carry across. and. Let people know what what you see. the The great part about um, creating a reindeer um, never having seen one before only photographs and photographs are so momentary. Uh, you look at them and, and then uh, you appreciate them and then they're gone. Um, so the memories, a slight faint faint memory in your mind's eye somewhere, um, but. Having um, hunted a great deal in my youth with my older brother, I would, became very familiar with the anatomy of elk and deer, and and God so moves. that carries over mm -hmm. into the movements of a reindeer. And so they move the same way. Mm -hmm. Their bodies are somewhat similar, so that helps a great deal. And going to a taxidermist and, and looking at the antlers and seeing what they look like and how they can vary. Um, but what I wanted with this, with this uh, whole thing of Santa and his, uh, his gang of eight, uh, his mm -hmm. reindeer, a beautiful uh, bunch there, uh, their, their horns, these, these regal antlers coming up. And I gave them all nice, uh, full, uh, mature antlers uh, because I think it just looks pretty. It mm -hmm. really looks pretty. And, and, uh, uh, it's just the, the motion, the, it, the getting the feel of a piece at times uh, I have to work at. And so it's sometimes the motion uh, has to be right. And sometimes it's hard to get all of, especially if you're not familiar with the creature and, you, and you've never seen one. And, and I'm not going to the zoo to go touch one. <laughs> but so going to the taxidermy was as, as 
as close as I could get to one, which helped an enormous amount uh, to be able to uh, sit down and then try to recall, recall what I felt uh, for those few hours. The, the animals, any animal out there, are, are so graceful. Man, the movement of men, uh, the, the human body is, is so graceful. Uh, anything alive moves, uh, and it's graceful. But when you get down to it, even, even trees, Christmas trees are beautiful, and they're graceful, you know, when the wind blows, they move. Everything moves. Um, the, most of my pieces aren't dramatic, they aren't jumping and, and whatever else, but there's just a slow movement sometimes is all it takes, a, a gentle movement. And of course Santa is a, is a very gentle, happy creature and, and so, uh, so are his reindeer and so everything worked out. I like that in between movement sometimes, mm -hmm. uh, catching a piece. That doesn't look like uh, that, that an animal or a person can move like that. But it's that in-between motion that's really beautiful sometimes, uh, catching that, that moment uh, that's not quite normal. I, I love the, the whole concept of um, the, the nature, the beauty, because of so much of my younger days were spent up in the mountains and, and uh, being able to to be up there when there's silence and to see nature in its pure form. And the reindeer gives that to me of going back in time and looking, sitting down and thinking about moments when I saw uh, various kinds of animals similar to the reindeer and the beauty, the grace, the motion um, that they travel with uh, through, through their environment. Uh, is just absolutely beautiful. When you're sitting there and you don't know, they don't know that you're sitting there watching them. It's just, there's nothing in the world like it. It is amazing what they can do and, um, and, and deal with the world that they live in out there and, and get around in it. It's just, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Reindeer, my reindeer can fly and, um, is a kind of, I want them to fly. And, and uh, of course, everyone always thinks of scent and his reindeer and zipping through the skies. And, and um, um, do, doing some research on this whole thing and, and, and looking at one photo of, of a silhouette of Santa and his reindeer uh, with the moon behind them. Mm -hmm. uh, these moments, these pictures, and, and you think of uh, these reindeer just getting ready and, and I, when we're going to do something that we love doing and I'm sure my reindeer, Santa's reindeer, I'll call them mine for the moment, <laughs> Santa's reindeer are so excited and they're so up for this journey that they're going to take and so they're ready to step high and their heads are up and they're lifting their, their heads up and the antlers are there. This is this is regal about the whole thing of uh, yes, you know, let's go and and cover the the, the whole world and, and make people the kids happy, you know. This is it's just exciting. They're charged with a pretty cool mission. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All in separate pieces because the reindeers one one sculpture, all eight of them, uh, we'll call them one one section of it, and Santa's another, and the sleigh is another. So they're all very separate. And so in creating them, um, thinking about proportions and all of that, and so first the reindeer I had to come up with, and um, deciding on the size that I wanted to make, um, because if you make them too big, you're going to cover the entire length of a floor if there are for reindeer one behind the other, so they have to be a certain size. That can be moved around. And so I had to think about little things, big things like that, I guess. Of, of, uh, also <laughs> the, the, um, the work behind it and, and being able to hold one in my hand and flip it around and move it around. And changing the movement of the legs, the ears, the head, the neck, and things like that. So 
within the legs what I had to do in order to keep the figure up, the, the reindeer, the body, the head, uh, was to put a very thin piece of wire in the wax. So the ra reindeer were made out of wax, and a uh, kind of wax called Victory Brown. And wax holds up very well to its own weight, and just a very thin piece of wire will help hold up this uh, reindeer. So there's a little piece of wire going down through his legs and into the hooves and just up into the shoulder. And um, then that was, um, that was the harder part, the movement of the body uh, and the head and the neck. So somehow you have to get all these parts working together and the movement going and the head tilted up slightly and not just static but just slight subtle movement of the head, the leg, um, and then um, looking at it and leaving it alone and then a day or two later coming back and looking at it again with, it, with uh, rested eyes or mine or whatever it is that does it, I'm not sure, but, and then saying, oh, I need to fix that, you know, uh, that's too big, that's too small, and going back and changing it. So it's kind of um, uh, overhauling it constantly till I get what I want. Sometimes it happens very easily, very quickly, and I get what I want. And other times uh, it's, it's kind of a struggle. Um, yeah, but then to have eight of eight them, of them eight of them, <laughs> and then, yeah, getting them all there in, uh, is, yeah, it was, wow. was uh, uh, fun. It, it was it was hard, but it was fun. But the thing about it is that that as you make one and then another one and then make their antlers and see how how they look side by side, mm -hmm. and then you start getting this energy, this excitement building, so that after a while you can hardly wait to make the next one and the next one. And then when you're done with the reindeer, then there's of course the sleigh, and the sleigh was a difficult part. Because I don't know what a sleigh yes. looks like. <laughs> Many years ago, I carved one out of wood for Lori uh, for Christmas, and out of one piece of wood. And uh, um, so I kind of like that sleigh, but it's not like that sleigh because there's not a Santa involved with that sleigh mm. or reindeer. It was just a sleigh with uh, little presents in the back uh, of the sleigh, just something to put on the mantle of the fireplace. And so made a sleigh and didn't like it, so I tore it up. And then made another one, and it still didn't look right. So finally, on my third try, I finally worked it out so that it looks like possibly not a toboggan, not a sled, but a sleigh, and a place for Santa to sit and uh, for his uh, bag of toys in the back and the runners and all that. And, and then how do the reindeer pull this magical sleigh? They have to be connected. But uh, when you look at a coach and, and, a, and the four horses that pull a, a coach, a wagon or whatever, um, how do they pull it? So there's a single tree in front of a wagon and there's a tongue on some wagons, this long stick that they goes out in front of the wagon bar that they, they're attached to the horses. But so here I created a single tree, and single tree is just a single bar that, f that comes up in front of the sleigh so that I could hook up the, the four reindeer on each side to the sleigh, to the front of the sleigh, and um, that way they're connected because I would imagine um, they, they, they have to all be connected. And I didn't want too much paraphernalia in there to, to make it too cluttered and, mm -hmm. and just simple and, yeah, and just easy. Honest, I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then easy enough for Santa to get into. And then when I came to Santa, I did not want Santa sitting in the sleigh like he was ready to take off grabbing his reins and on Vixen, on Vixen and all that business. Um, I had him walking up to the sleigh and he's putting his hand on the seat and he has his bag of toys over his back mm -hmm. with his right arm and he's getting ready to... That's the movement we were talking about. He's in between. Yeah. He's not in yet. He's, he's not, not in yet. yet. He's, yeah. He's, yes. he's getting ready. Right. And, and the reindeer are getting excited because, and their heads are slightly turned to, 
to the uh, left and Santa's on the left side of the reindeer um, so that uh, he's going to throw the toys in and then they all hop in and, and then off they go, you know, where nobody knows. <laughs> Yeah. Right. I looked at some other sleighs, and a lot of sleigh, sleighs that I looked at uh, just didn't quite cut it. And so uh, I guess I used my artistic license in, in creating the sleigh and, and all of that. And uh, the rings, the reindeer, the works. So it's just my interpretation of uh, this magical creature and his reindeer and, and his his, his journey and his adventure and mm -hmm. just the excitement, the energy. Yeah. I think it's love. Uh, love is such a strong thing. And if you have love for something, uh, very deep, true kind of love, you nourish it, you take care of it. And it's very precious. And fortunately, I've been given this thing called uh, sculpting. Uh, even when I could see, I wanted to sculpt. And so I've been fortunate that uh, even with my disabilities, that I can still do it. And uh, and I love. Uh, I just love doing it. And, and it's so easy to get lost. In, in, in that world, and it doesn't matter if it's uh, clay, wax, stone, or, or, or any kind of material, um, if, if there's uh, I come, come across a thought, and these thoughts take over, and they start forming, uh, I get these visual imagery, and I look at them in my mind's eye, and I kind of, it's like looking at photographs, you kind of toss them to the side or you think that one's nicer. And, and then you change it and move it around in, in your head. In my head, I move it around and, and until I come out with what I want. But then even at that, it doesn't always work. Uh, I can come back to a year later and then maybe it will work. Um, I got carried away. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. When I was growing up, I grew up on the uh, Santa Clara Pueblo Reservation and Christmas was not a real big deal on the Pueblo to, to us. Um, the, the Indian side of it, they, on Christmas Eve, they built these fires, these cross uh, little hatch fires uh, stacked up uh, like a little square of various heights. And, and uh, I guess... Uh, what it is, is bringing two cultures, two religions together, that of the, the Catholicism and, and, or whatever Christian religion is um, of Christ, the birth of Christ, and, and lighting a way for, for the, um, the three, the Magi, Magi yeah. and, um, and showing them where the, where the Christ figure is, and Mary and all that, and Joseph. Um, so these Indians will light these fires in the Pueblo all over and you'll stand around and, and talk and, and it's just kind of a, a very nice happening, a feeling, I guess, that, that is there. So that was incorporated into, into the Pueblo culture. But the most amazing one that I've ever seen is up in Taos. Um, they'll take the... Uh, saints out of the church and take them for a walk before while well, it's light and they come back and they have enormous fires up there uh, and the beautiful the, the Pueblo Taos Pueblo is absolutely beautiful and that it's multi-storied structures on either side of this uh, center plaza and there's stream running through it and if there's snow on the ground and you see these fires and you see people standing around it um, you can't help but feel good about life and what's happening and if you, you're coming into the Pueblo um, and the fires are already going you can see this massive black smoke coming up out of the center of the Pueblo and it's just this kind of 
uh, oh, images coming into my mind of, of those moments. And, and the, the wood that they used was very, they looked for pitchy wood because it would burn, burn, burn very well. And so it was just, there was just something beautiful about it. The next day there would be a dance. Uh, uh, they would interchange. Uh, some years it was the deer dance, a beautiful dance, and and I've always looked at that that uh, that deer dance as as kind of a a play of sorts, an uh, Indian play of of the deer, the hunter, and Mother Earth, and all of that, uh, an Indian version of a play, and of course the the other pueblos have their own versions of of the deer dance and. And sometimes they do the corn dance and tiles or in Santa Clara Pueblo often they did the what they call the Malinche or the uh, Montachina, uh, which sounds very uh, uh, Hispanic uh, sounding and and there is some uh, a great deal of Hispanic influence in those dances and so these cultures over decades and perhaps centuries have just kind of uh, amalgamated into a certain kind of of a dance connected to religion from both sides. What was um, always fun was when um, we would go look for a tree uh, in the old days. Uh, um, we'd wander around looking for a tree and, and then eventually Dad would decide, no, that one looks good, you know. So chop it down, we'd all drag it back, and and then he'd, he'd make a stand and put it up, and, and of course, uh, putting ornaments on the tree and lights and and all of that. Um, if there's, there's, you can't help but get into the spirit, the feeling of, uh, of something special happening. Uh, maybe it's the, the beginning, uh, a new beginning, or uh, something that's going on, that and way. hopefully yeah. it is a new beginning. Oh my goodness, there are probably so many. Um, what was fun was when our daughters were old enough, and uh, we would sit around and make decorations out of cookie dough, and and uh, they would paint them. Lori would bake them, and then we'd hang them on the on the tree and. And they would decide um, what ornaments to put where. And of course, uh, before we did that, we would go uh, shopping for ornaments. So everyone picked an ornament. ornament. And um, so they'd hang up their ornament on the tree. And, and then uh, at the very end, we, I'd pick up one of the girls and, and they would um, hold this angel and, and, be, and put it on top of the tree. And then that would be the... Um, the the end of, of that 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 uh, celebration of decorating that beautiful tree, and then um, Lori sometimes at night. I remember once uh, I don't know where the girls were. Maybe they were in college, but I was stringing popcorn, and we had never strung that popcorn before for Christmas. And she was reading to me uh, a story, a book. And uh, there's fire going in the fireplace, and there's just something very peaceful about that moment. Um, and uh, talking about books, uh, Lori would read the girls the night before Christmas, every Christmas Eve, and then we'd send them to bed. And then I got to drink the eggnog and <laughs> eat the cookies. So, <laughs> yeah, so that was great. If you don't believe in Santa, then you're missing out. Because Santa is happy, he's giving uh, in, in energy, in, in just the season. Um, and we have to believe in Santa. Because as long as we're children and we have that little bit of a child, in us, and if we can still believe in Santa, then there's hope, and there's always something to look forward to. Unfortunately, I got toys. Um, 
I got toys in my stocking and um, when, when the girls were gone on one occasion in college and Lori and I decided, oh, we're just going to do stockings this year. And so I went out and we both, we always hang our stockings on the, on the, on the screen on the hearth in the fireplace. And, and uh, so I filled up Lori's stocking and the next morning I went out there and there was a stocking, one that I myself could fit into. <laughs> she had taken advantage of our deal of, of, <laughs> of just doing stockings. And there was this massive stocking laying there with all these big boxes in it. And I couldn't believe she did that to me. Oh, that's, oh my goodness. Oh, too many. Uh, I guess the best gift was, I guess, my wife, our kids. You know, I don't know if Santa brought them. Maybe, <laughs> maybe he plays the stork as well, and maybe he plays Cupid as well. I don't know, but um, I guess that's the greatest uh, gift of all is is my family, and that's what what I think uh, it's all about is Santa and and just life and family and enjoying it, seeing it, living it. Uh, not always easy, but for the most part, you can't beat it. Oh, I, 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 want, I want us to all love each other. And sometimes it's not so easy. The, and not only in this country, in this town, in, in any home, but people, we're, we're just so similar and uh, we just look at our differences. But if we could look at more of our similarities and, and reach out and know that that other person feels and wants to live the same way that you do. And so, uh, I want I want people to be connected in a more uh, giving manner of of uh, sharing life, sharing life. Let's learn how to share life together, and we'll all be better off for it. Thank you for having me. And it was my greatest pleasure to get us all together. Uh, and thank you, Santa and the reindeer. For so many years, I've been, I've been creating sculptures from my native heritage, the everyday life of the people um, that I grew up around. Um, but as time moves on, we all change. So as time progressive, progresses. I've gone into religious uh, theme matters, uh, into uh, other cultures of, of uh, creating sculptures of other cultures, and fantasy. There's a whole world of fantasy, and that um, I've kind of gone into a little bit, but this is the ultimate fantasy. Mm -hmm of uh, so many people because it's an annual thing and because it's so magical and wonderful and everyone gets into it. You drive down the streets in the winter and you see lights, you see Santas everywhere, you, you, you see, you feel like ho, 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 <laughs> and I believe and, and um, so now I want one day I woke up and I thought, Santa, you know, just that, that all it was was one word, Santa and his reindeer. And that started the whole thing. I started thinking about it. And uh, then slowly I sat down and started to create them. But uh, it's a whole different uh, area that I 
uh, I've never been to. And so, so it's different, it's new, it's exciting. And, and it's always time, I guess time came. Uh, it, it, it just somehow controls things and, and it lets you, you know, within your soul of the time is right to make Santa. And that's mm -hmm. what happened. So that's what I'm doing.